All right. <clears throat> so we're comparing this open interval, zero to one, to all of the real numbers. So how do these compare with respect to cardinality? Well, we already know that they have the same cardinality. So with respect to cardinality, they are the same size. With respect to set containment, the interval from zero to one lies inside the real numbers. So it's clear that the interval from zero to one is smaller than the real numbers with respect to set containment. And finally, Lebesgue measure. Well, this is an easy case. The Lebesgue measure of the interval from zero to one, no need to get fancy and put covers because we know that for open intervals, it's just the length. So the Lebesgue measure of zero one is one and the Lebesgue measure of the real numbers is infinite. And I guess you can justify that by saying infinity minus negative infinity is infinity plus infinity, which is infinity. Uh, it's, I don't know, it's, it's, it's damn long, so we'll put infinite. So to recap, with respect to cardinality, they are the same size. With respect to set containment, the open interval from zero to one is smaller. And with respect to Lebesgue measure, the open interval from zero to one is, again, smaller. Now a good question to ask at this point is, can it ever happen that given two sets A and B, A is bigger than B with respect to one of these, but B is bigger than A with respect to the other? And the answer is no, that will never happen. If A is a subset of B, then it's pretty clear that the cardinality of A is less than or equal to the cardinality of B. And the Lebesgue measure of A can't be larger than B, and that's pretty easy to show as well. So I guess I'll formalize what I'm saying down below. And finally, we're gonna compare the half open interval from closed zero to one open to the open interval from zero to one. In other words, we're just adding the point zero to zero one. All right. <clears throat> so cardinality. Okay, we know already that their cardinalities are the same. So they are the same size with respect to cardinality. And set containment wise, let's see, we add the point zero, so it's pretty clear that zero comma one is a subset of closed zero to one. So by set containment, the open interval is smaller. Okay, now Lebesgue measure. Okay, the Lebesgue measure of the open interval from zero to one, it's just an open interval, so we know it's the length of that interval, which is one. Now we have a half open interval, so we do need to technically make a little argument for that. So I think I'll start it off and then let you guys complete it because I value learning and I'm also lazy. So let's start off the argument to show that the Lebesgue measure of the half open interval is also one. So let me think. Uh, for any epsilon greater than zero, the half open interval zero to one is contained in the open interval of zero plus epsilon to one. So just make the interval a little bit bigger and make it open right here. Now since this half open interval is going to be contained in this open interval for every epsilon, you should be able to convince yourself that the Lebesgue measure of the half open interval is also one. And I didn't leave room to write it like I've been doing, but that's okay. So with respect to Lebesgue measure, these two are the same size. So cardinality wise, they are the same size. Set containment wise, zero comma one is smaller. And Lebesgue measure wise, they are the same. So that's how these sets compare with respect to these other notions of size. So one of the big reasons I made this video is that when Blackburn Redpin asks, 
which of these has more elements, n or z, he concluded that they have the same number of elements because they have the same cardinality. And a lot of people in the comments were like, wait a minute, z contains n, so how could they have the same number of elements? If z has numbers that n does not, clearly z has more elements. And that's not a bad thought, it's just that the point here is that we asked which one has more elements, that is math speak for which set has the greater cardinality. Now the cardinality of a finite set is very literally how many things are in the set, how many objects are in this box. But when it comes to the cardinality of infinite sets, I really think you should view it as less literally how many things are in the box and more of the extension of that idea or the generalization of that idea to infinite sets. So I guess what I'm saying is that when we ask which of these has more elements, do not interpret that literally. Interpret that as, okay, that's math verbiage for which of the sets has the bigger cardinality. And that intuition that Z contains N so Z is bigger is a valid one. It's just that you are referring to a different comparison of the sizes of these sets. So if someone asks which of these sets has more elements, that can only mean which one has the greater cardinality. That's what it means just in math speak, but it's kind of not exactly the literal meaning of that in everyday speech, like cardinality of a finite set is. And all three notions of these ways to compare the sizes of sets have their place, they have their uses, and they all have their drawbacks as well. So maybe a drawback of cardinality would be a situation like this. Maybe that's not appropriate for the specific thing you're talking about. Maybe it's not appropriate to say that n and z are the same size, depending on what you're talking about. For set containment, the obvious drawback is that two sets may not be comparable at all. If you have two disjoint sets, then neither one is a subset of the other, so we can't say that A is smaller than B or B is smaller than A, you're just not comparable. And those two sets could be wildly different with respect to the other two notions of size. And when it comes to the Lebesgue measure, well, all countable sets are the same size, they all have the Lebesgue measure zero. So that's a drawback or a place where Lebesgue measure may not be appropriate. If we're in a situation where we're looking at a bunch of countable sets, why would we talk about their Lebesgue measure? It's zero for all of them, so it's, it's pointless. So when it comes to comparing the sizes of sets, it may be that your intuition about which set is bigger doesn't agree with one of these notions, but maybe it agrees with the other. For example, the NZ thing. Cardinality-wise, they're the same size, but set containment wise, Z is bigger. So it's very appropriate to think of N as being smaller than Z. It's just that that notion of small is with respect to set containment, not cardinality. But anyways, that's gonna do it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you next time.